Hey traders, this is Taylor with Top Pick Trading. I want to give you guys a little chart review today. It was a FOMC day, so we had some craziness after the announcement at 2 p.m. Um, you can see during the overnight we pretty much traded up into this range that held all the way until the meeting. Kind of had some wacky price action that you want to stay out of. Um, I think you know it started settling down in here, so maybe you could argue for this to be right in here, but I went ahead and just for the purpose of the review, marked it an hour before the announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern to 30 minutes after. Um, but anyway, uh, coming out of that, we kind of were still range bound, but just kind of wacky price action. And we got two nice strong legs down. Uh, this support tried to hold, but you could see it dwindling. And then eventually we shot down and, and really had a nice bearish channel into the close. Uh, there's a couple ways to draw this. Um, we'll get to that one when we get to this portion of the review. But let's get started. So you can see through the overnight, like I mentioned, had this break uh, move up, the break in new high. Um, small break there, but break nonetheless. Had a strong move down here. This move up was really strong, so I don't think you want to just be blindly taking a second entry short right here. And you can see it would have burned you, got you in by a tick, and it stopped you out. <coughs> uh, move up again. I just really don't see anything through here. There's a second entry long right here, you know. But the problem is you've already got the breaking new high here, and then the bar obviously isn't any good anyway. It is a triple test as well. So if the bar was good, maybe you can take a, a chance there, but it doesn't really matter since the bar is not good. Push higher here. Uh, no real setups through here. We're making higher highs and higher lows still, so I'm not really thinking short just yet. Make a lower high here, but just mid-range and near the support pushes lower. Kind of chops sideways here. Uh, you got the breaking new low from the downtrend. All the uptrends are probably played out, so we don't really know what's happening here, and that's probably why prices just chop sideways for like an hour or so right here. Uh, push higher. And you could probably find a channel in this. Doesn't really matter. Just more sideways than anything. Um, so it breaks higher, and then it does get the retest on that channel if it is valid. Uh, push higher here. This was a pretty tempting trade right here. I can see why people took it. Um, if you did take that one, don't blame you. It is a little sideways. I'm sure Mac will mention that as well. Um, and the real issue with this is, is that there's just not very much room. You can see you only got a point there. So um, you come back and you get a triple test. Made a lower low here though. And then once again, not enough room. Um, so, you know, both of these are pretty tempting, but um, in hindsight, I, I can see why you definitely want to skip these. Uh, that's a really nice bar there, but just not enough room. We've been going really sideways here. So the push higher, uh, and then this is before the meeting, so you don't want to take anything in through this craziness through here. We have this move up here, no real clear uptrend through this besides this these small little micro ones with the breaking new high. You get this little channel here, and it's got a break. A new high as well turns right at this level right where the meeting started and that's often times what happens it'll come back and uh, test the levels right when the big movement happened and uh, the start of the meeting so you can see this was um, yeah like a minute before the meeting so right in here the meeting happened obviously with that big bar and that's exactly where we came back to to test so um, we pushed pretty harshly off of that we get a new low here from this one and we get a first entry second entry so this is really, you know, this is a pretty big gap here, but if you want to go ahead and call this a triple test and a second entry short really far from the EMA, um, I think that's a decent trade there. You know, I wish you got two ticks better there, but I still think this is a decent trade to take a chance on, and especially, you know, eight ticks there coming out of this meeting where everything else is pretty big. That's a lower risk overall. We push lower, get a little overshoot, and then we have this, like, secondary channel that's not really, like, a break a new low from this channel it is but it's almost it's big enough to uh, classify it as a channel itself I guess is the best way to put it so since this is so strong I'm looking for a retest even of this so when we get this second entry short here it's a decent trade I, I hate how it closed into the EMA after bouncing off this support but two clear legs back there on that strong move so you know you may want to take a chance there um, I mentioned that I watched two charts with a different uh, option on my data series. I'm going to show you how my bar looked uh, at the end of this video. I did not take this one. I took the option on the second chart. So anyway, it does eventually work lower. 
get another second entry short, but this one's kind of congested in the middle. I'm just not so sure what's happening here quite as much. <clears throat> but um, then we get this lower high here, and this is if you this is technically I shouldn't have said this is the second entry um, since we didn't break higher here. This is still just the first entry. So really, this is the second entry. Uh, confirms this key entry point here as well. And look how sweet that bar is. You can kind of see these consistent lower highs here. The support's holding, but we're pushing less and less off of it. So this bar right here, right at the EMA, confirming that key entry point. Um, that's a pretty sweet trade. And even if you're worried about the support, you still got room, I think. Yeah, right, enough, right around enough room <coughs> to take a chance there. So um, I kind of froze in real time on this, but boy, I wish I took it. Push lower, get a second entry short here, just kind of far from the MA and a little bit congested. So I'm not as happy about that one. It is a low risk, it's still eight ticks. So I think you want to lay off that one. Push lower, nice up through here. And then here we get a first entry, second entry. It confirms that key entry point for a fourth touch. Really nice little bar there. I don't like the three bulls. It almost makes me want to mark it green, but just being at this major key entry point uh, with a good bar like that, I think I'll keep it red. Um, and if you did want to count this as a double bottom, because it kind of looks like one, you could consider this a second entry. Otherwise, it's a lower high, triple test. Just grinding right down that trend line there, you can see perfectly. Um, if you watch this live, this did not break lower. So we came up, we pushed right here, and then pushed higher, and then broke lower. So I think that makes that trade a little bit better, because if you if you took, uh, if this triggered, then you would have got stopped down unless you're putting your stop behind the previous swing high. So the way this formed, it, had, it showed really good momentum. There is some congestion there for sure, but you know, right at the EMA and the key entry point with that good of a bar and pushing off this resistance for the third time, I think it's definitely a um, pretty good trade. And that takes you right into 230 there. Um, you can see right here, unfortunately, this was like yeah four four minutes to close, but this was like a repeat pattern of this trade here, right into the support. But you know, we'd push through it once, and obviously. This channel is really strong. We did get a little close outside here, but really strong little bar there, but no way to take that three or four minutes before the close. So, um, and then I did mention, you may have had your channel more like this. You can see it still holds pretty well. There we go. So either way, I think you could draw it both ways. Um, let me just show you the secondary channel now. All right, so this is the same chart, 2000 tick chart, but with, if you go to your data series, I'm just simply unchecking this box. Um, and you can change the number of days you want to load and that'll kind of just uh, randomize your, your bars. It's based on a few different things, but uh, what's important is that it'll change how your signal bars look, all your bars. So you can see, this is that second entry that I had on my other chart. You can go back in the video and take a look at it. Um, look how much better this one looks. Here's that lower high. It looks a little different. Smaller risk, maybe a little too congested in this case. Um, compared to the other one, you don't see as much momentum. But, you know, so it's, it's the point is, it's nice to be able to watch two charts. Um, I've only been doing it for a few weeks, but you should give it a try. Um, you can see just how much better that bar looks there. Let me show you one more time. That's this trade right here. But anyway worth considering if you want to uh, on the main chart this box will be checked so and this doesn't really matter how many days you load since it's creating the start of a new bar every day so anyway yeah something to think about especially on these slower days it didn't matter too much today because you got this nice downtrend with several setups but on some real slow days you may get a couple different opportunities for a good signal bar in a, a contextual spot that you like so uh, if you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe, share it with people that are wanting to day trade, and uh, thanks for watching. Check out our course if you want to on topictrading.com, and we'll see you guys next time.